So I reckon we give it a scramble. This program doesn't have a scrambling feature, so we have to do it randomly. Now what I normally do with scrambling, and I just randomly just move it in any place. Um, normally I, I turn this like left and right, so I go like that, and like that. Then I might do a U2 or something. It's like what I do in physical, in a way. Um, and then I might do it again. And I might do some inside cell moves and then maybe some outside cell moves like that. And then I might do a gyro, so I might do an LG like that. Then I would re. You could probably do that, then move it around, and then do an LG again. Um, and I might do some sort of moves like this. that we might do that we might do a, a u y twice or something do a ug now and then you might do an r uh, an lg so yeah it's just randomly just turning this puzzle like that um it would be cool if there was a scramble feature which i think will come later on the fc2 here and then i might move this over and then i might go like that do that twice, and then I might go like that. So it's just randomly just turning sides of your cells. Uh, and then I might do a BG, LG, do it again. Um, when you do BG, LG, and all that, like if you, if you combine a gyro, those are really good for scrambling as well. You might do some rotations here or something. You might do some long rotations. You might do some rotations like that. Um, then when you're ready to do to do your gyros, you can just do like a, you can combine a gyro from like, you might do a UG and you might do an RG or something. And then you can continue rotating. So you can do stuff like that, which is also great to scramble. I find that really good when you're scrambling. And then you can might do some RKT moves like that with the inside and the right cell sort of thing. I might do a DG and then an R and an LG and then the same thing. So it really scrambles it. You can see how it's quite scrambled now. FC2 and then I might do a BZ2. And then I might go. Oh. Now this looks pretty scrambled. I might just do a few more. I might go FG and then RG. And then I might leave it as that. So that is a scramble, and it looks pretty well scrambled. <coughs> yeah. Um, let's start to solve it. All right. So now this puzzle is pretty scrambled. The first thing I do is I normally open it up like this. See my, you know, I, I, like I said earlier, my cell positions. So I look at these one C's, and I know that. Um, this is my yellow cell, this is my red cell, this is my white cell, this is my orange, blue, green, purple, and pink. So I look at these one C's and I know like where these cells are. I want to do the white hypercross, which is basically the what the one C with all the two C's around it. Um, touching the correct one C's on these sides here as well. So the approach I normally go for this, um, and probably the easiest way to, for me to explain it, when you get the daisy on the uh, you know normal three by three cube, similar to the idea for this, um, this is probably the easiest way to, to 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 sort of for you guys to understand. All the the white two C's, which you know that, that contain white on them, I have it so that all of the whites here facing towards the yellow one C. So you see how this one here is correct. This one here is correct. I just need to place in one, two, three, four more. But I need to make sure that I have the white facing towards the yellow um, one C there. So how I would go about doing that, this one's correct because it's touching yellow. I want to make sure all the two Cs, the white two Cs around this yellow one C is all the white diamonds need to be facing towards it. What I normally do is I notice this one here, it's actually touching, it's actually on the white cell. I already 
the white on this 2C is already facing inwards, so like, you know, it's actually, it's actually, you know, facing towards this here. So I could actually bring it to here. So I just need to do an F move like that, and you can see that that will go to there. And you can see the white is facing towards the middle, towards this yellow. So I just keep, I basically just keep on, you know, placing these uh, two Cs on this yellow. This blue and white one, um, this is going to be kind of a weird, weird thing, but sort of like here. But if I did, you know, I can't really move it in because if I did something like this, it will just stay in that same place. If I close that or into this, you can see how that just stays in the same place. So it needs to either do like some sort of rotation. If I did an actual Z rotation, this white here would touch the yellow. So be facing towards it, because this white diamond here would be facing towards this yellow, um, and that would be good because um, that's what I want. I want all these white diamonds to be facing towards this yellow. So here's this white blue. The white's here. If I did an, an I, this is the I self. So if I did an I Z, this will come down, and I can't do an I Z because it's restricted. So I actually need to bring the, the eye cell to the right and then do the eye, do, do the Z move. So I need to go do a left gyro. So hold down W, push spacebar. Now this cell, which is the eye cell, which was the eye cell, is now on the right. Now I just do my Z move to bring it in. Now I notice if I do my Z move, I will move that red and white out of place. So I actually need to bring that back. So I'll actually just need to bring an opening so like this part's free, so what I could do is I could set that like that. So now that is now a slot free, so I can bring that in. So I could bring this back, like I said, and then do the Z move. And you can see that that will not disturb any of the white pieces. So now I just need to gyro back, so hold down F, push spacebar, and now that is positioned to where we have, so you can see that white is now touching the yellow. So we want all these white 2Cs touching the yellow 1C. And these, we've got two more left. This is the white and pink. Um, and it's on the sticky outy part, which is very annoying. But if I did a gyro, a front gyro, this white 2C will go into where this, this, this 2C will. So if I did a front gyro, it will bring it off that sticky outy bit and put it in there. I could do a front gyro from there which will bring it to there. You can see I've done that. Now, I noticed that if I do that same Z move like before, um, like, you know, bring it, since I can't do Z moves on the ISL, so I need to bring it out and then do a Z move like that. But I notice if I do that same procedure, this white diamond is not, like if I do, let's, let's imagine if we did a Z move on here, right? The white's not going to touch the yellow. It's going to be facing this way, which is the wrong, which is wrong. So I need to actually move it in differently. So there's an open spot there, right? So I could bring it, the open spot up to here like that. And this might seem kind of weird, but I'm going to bring it in like this. So I notice that if I bring it over one, this white diamond will be facing down which will be facing towards this yellow one C, which is what we want. To move it over one, what I need to do is a sort of cell rotation. Um, it's not, it's nothing, it's, it's, it's sort of a restricted cell rotation though, because I can't really bring it, or if I do a, like the actual move, it would actually not bring that 2C over, it will just keep it in the middle there. So what I need to do is I need to do some sort of unrestricted rotation on this upsell. So this here, if I move that over there, that's actually a, you know, if I, if these two C's moved over um, by one uh, this way, that means that is a, basically a U Z prime. If I did a U Z prime, that, that two C will move over this way. Um, so I need to do a U Z prime now, how do I do a UZ prime? I can't do it because, you know, these are restricted. 
So I need to gyro in and then gyro to the right. And now I can now it'll be in the unrestricted zone so I can turn it. So I need to move it to the unrestricted zone, which is on the right. So what I need to do is I need to do a up gyro to move it to the inside. Or this cell, move the cell to the inside. So I need to do the up gyro, which will bring it to the inside. Now I need to, now this is on the inside, the cell that we need to focus on, we need to push it to the right. So we need to do a right gyro, a left gyro in my bed. So we need to do a left gyro to move it to the right. So we just pull down W, push spacebar. Now it's in the unrestricted zone. Now, like I said before, we need to do a use Z prime. So this is the cell that we've moved into the unrestricted zone. We can just do the Z prime on here. The Z prime like that. And now you can see that we've done the Z prime. Now we seem to bring everything back. So since we've got this already highlighted, we just bring this back to the center. So let's just push spacebar. Now that brings that cell back into the middle. And now we just need to hold down. Since we've you know moved that up cell into the middle, we just need to bring it back out because we know um, we did an up gyro before. We need to do a down gyro to bring it back, to bring it out from the middle. So what you need to do is you need to push, hold down C and do a down gyro to bring it back to the top. Now you can see that that has done one rotation this way. So you see, remember that piece was there, now it's moved to there. And you can see how that yellow, that white diamond, is facing towards the yellow. And that's also how you normally insert two C's as well sometimes, because you know they're not going to be around the right way. So you need to do rotations like that to bring them in. Um, so it looks like we may have one more left. The last one is actually, it's actually over here. You can see how white and orange is over here. Now it's on the outside cell. In order to do that, I might actually need to do that same thing, but down here, which we move the pieces over by one. Um, so what I might do is, since the open spot's there, I can just move this down like that. You see now the open spot's now on the down. Now since this is on the down, I can do that move. Just actually move the puzzle like this, so I can actually. I would actually need to move, do a cell rotation like that to bring it over. Now that cell rotation is sort of like, since it's on the front here, it's on the front cell, I need to do a, I'll say it's an FY prime because this will come to here. Um, so if I do an FY prime, so I need to move it into the unrestricted zone first, which is on the right side. So I need to move this front cell to this right cell. So what I do is I go do a front gyro to bring it to the middle. Now, since now it's in the middle, I bring it to the right, so I do a left gyro to bring it to the right. Now, that front cell is now to the right. Now, like I said, it's sort of an FY prime. We do the Y prime on the right cell here, like so. Now it's there. Now, what we do is we need to bring everything back. So we keep this highlighted and push spacebar, and now we'll bring that cell back into the middle, like that. So now it's in the middle. Now, we just do a, since we've moved the front cell back out to the front, we need to do a back gyro to bring it out to the front again. Do a back gyro and that will bring it back out to the front. Now you can see that that was originally there. Now we've done that move. Now it's moved to here. And you can see that will also, the white was facing inwards, that will keep the same orientation. So now that will come like that. Now that would face on the inside is what we want. So that is basically the four dimensional daisy right here. We've basically moved all these two C's is white two C's to be facing towards this yellow, this yellow one C here. So now the next step is to bring it on this side, which is the white cell. So this is actually pretty easy. Um, it's not as hard as you know bringing them to this. What we need to do is, since so you can see how this green one is with the green, I push period. That's actually touching the the green one C. So that's also in the right place already. So what we could do. But since that's already matched up with that, I just need to do hold down F and do a move like that. And you can see that that 2C has now been correctly oriented because if we move this back, you can see that the green is touching the green because the green time is touching the green and then the white diamond is touching the white. So that's correctly oriented. Now we just need to do the same for all these uh, 2Cs. So the blue and white 2C it's down here, let's do the blue and white next. So 
we'll just move it to here. I noticed that the blue cell's down here because it's the blue one sees down there. So what I need to do is I first need to match it. Since this is blue, the blue diamond needs to first touch the blue and then we need to touch the white diamond. So we always touch the other color first and then we touch the white diamond. The blue diamonds here needs to touch the blue one C, this. Now you can see if we do that, that blue is now with its blue one C. Now what we need to do is now move it to the white cell, hold down front cell, which is S, and we do that move. And now you can see that that is now correctly oriented. See, I've got purple blue with the blue one C and the white with the white one C. And so we just keep doing that with these two Cs. So you can see the purple ones here. Purple one C is over here. What I normally do in this case, is since it's in here, I normally do a back gyro. I normally move my two Cs out to the front and then I move them in. So I normally go so I do a back gyro to bring it out to the front. Now it's here. Now you can see that that's wrong because that's the pink 1C. That's not the purple 1C. The purple 1C is back here. So I just need to match that up to the purple 1C. So the purple 1C is back there. So I need to bring it to where that. So I need to do a move like this. So now it is with its purple 1C. I'll just bring it around like that. So now it's with its purple 1C. And now once it's with its purple 1C, we can do that front move, which will bring that to there, like that. So now that is placed correctly. Purple's with purple, and then white is with white. So now we, now this red and white, this red here is actually touching the pink one C, and the red one C is down here. So I need to do a move like this to bring it down to the red so now you can see that that's the red one c and now since yeah so i just highlight that cell and now i just need to do that move to where the, now that will match up with the white so i'll do that and now that's matched up with the, the, the white one c now you can see that's with red and that's with white now we have two more to place here it needs to be touching its one c so we first touch it up with its 1C. Now that's touching. We're well, not actually touching. So you can see how that's sort of, you know, sort of, you know, if we did this right, that would be touching. We need to do the move. So that's actually a new move. And we'll just do that, like that. And now that's paired up. And if we move that back, and there we go. See how that pink's touching? That white's touching. Now we've got one more. This, that's the orange diamond. It's touching the orange one C. So we do that. Now it's touching the orange one C. Now that's those two are matched up. We just do a front move. And that will bring that into place. And now we have basically solved the white hypercross. This with orange, whites with white, and all these one C's here. So all these all these two C's, you know, all these white diamonds are in the middle, facing the white one C, which is correct. Now the orange is touching the orange, green is touching green, red is touching red, blue is touching blue, and purple is purple and pink with pink. So there's the white hypercross done.